We have with us tonight, bringing the word of God tonight, Andrew Alcana, who leads our outreach department. He's doing a phenomenal job and he really is a soldier for souls. Why don't we give a big Way World Outreach welcome to Andrew Alcana, come on. Let's give God some praise in the house for being here on a Wednesday night. Come on. I was talking to Pastor Marco right now. We are embarking on 20 years of ministry. Come on, two decades of lives being impacted, are seeing our city turn around, seeing people get transformed on a day-to-day -day basis. That's not happening at every church, but it's happening here at the Way World Outreach. Give God some praise that he's turning our city around. Give God some praise that he's turning your life around. Give God some praise that he saved you. He rescued you. He rescued you from darkness and he brought you into his marvelous light. Come on. If he did something in your life, if he saved you, if he delivered you, if he rescued you, you got to give God some praise. Because Some of us should not be here. Some of us should be behind a cell. Some of us should still be addicted. Some of us should still be broken. But because God brought us into a place like this where we could experience the presence of the Lord. Real quick, I came here in 2011, and some of you guys could attest to this. If it wasn't for God placing you at the Way World Outreach, where would you be? In 2011, when I came here, I didn't have a dollar in my pocket. I was broke, I was lost, I was confused. I didn't know what vision was. I didn't know what it was like to see a vision come to pass. I didn't know what purpose was. I, didn't, I had no sense of direction. I was scared of life, bound to addiction. But today, I know my authority in Christ Jesus. Today, my identity is in Christ Jesus. Today, I'm a father of three. Me and my wife just celebrated eight years of marriage. We just opened up our third store this year. I came to this church with nothing, feeling like nothing, and I felt like I had nothing to contribute to anything or anybody. I believed every single lie of the enemy. But because I sat in this house, I came, I listened, I received, I came and I listened, I received. And because of Pastor Marco's yes, how many of us in this house have been forever impacted? Think about that. One man's yes has turned into a revolution. Take a look around you. We're a miracle territory. There's an anointing in this house there's a special anointing in this house. You could come here feeling like nothing, but God will do supernatural things and turn you into an extraordinary, powerful man and woman of God. Come on, man. Thank you, Pastor. Thank you for... If you would have asked me at 23 years old, what's your goal in life? I would have told you I just want to be 30. I lost my father at 16. My best friend was murdered at 19. Two of my friends committed suicide from heroin addiction. A little while after that, my friend was stabbed to death by his father. A little while after that, my friend got gunned down here in San Bernardino at a car wash. All I saw was death and I automatically expected death. I believed every single lie of the enemy, but I came in this house and I heard the truth. I heard the goodness of Jesus Christ, the gospel of Jesus Christ, and the Bible says that you shall know the truth. I believed every lie of the enemy year after year, day after day, I was being tormented, I was bound, but I finally heard the truth. The Bible says when you hear the truth and you know the truth, the truth shall set you free. Let's give God some praise.
And I, I didn't even tell you this. I've, I've traveled the whole United States of America teaching churches how to evangelize. Like, how crazy is that? How crazy is that? Come on. We're in a special place, amen? I'm going to pray real quick. Um, just look at your neighbor and just say, we're in the right place to be. There's an anointing in this house, and the anointing is for you too. And we're coming up on 20 years of ministry, and I believe we ain't seen nothing yet. We ain't seen nothing yet. It ain't time to slow down, right? All right, guys, I'll be here up all day. Let me pray. <laughs> Dearly Father, Lord, I, man, we thank you so, so much. Lord, I thank you for the leadership of this house. I thank you that we have a great, great shepherd that truly takes care of the sheep. Lord, there's so many people in here that are so grateful and thankful for his yes to us, Lord. And Lord, I pray that you, you bless him with so many more years of ministry, more mega ministry. And Lord, as we sit here tonight, Lord, I, I just, Lord, behind my voice, I pray that they hear your voice. I pray, Lord, that we would be encouraged and empowered and edified, Father God, to share your good news outside of this church. In Jesus' name we pray. We all say amen. Give the Lord some praise. So um, I came to bring a slingshot tonight. So if you don't want to get hit, go sit in the back. Or you just duck or move out the way. So the topic is uh, practical evangelism. Let's give it up for that, right? Um, I think of evangelism, it, it sometimes becomes like a lost, forgotten component. And I heard a young pastor say this the other, the, uh, I heard a sermon by a young pastor, actually one of my friends. He said, he said, there's three functions of a church. He said, the first component is it's, it's for the exaltation of God, meaning we come to church, we praise God, we honor God, we adore God, we give him our worship, we give him our honor, because he is most certainly worthy of our praise, amen? So the exaltation of God, most of us do that. When we're in here, we're either singing a song, clapping our hands, you're, you're, you're praising God. Second component, he said, is the edification of the church, meaning we come here, we hear the teaching and the preaching of God's word, and through the teaching and the preaching of God's word, we get encouraged and we rally together as a community, as a body of Christ, and we get edified as a church. But he said the last component it seems to be a, the lost, forgotten component. He said it's the evangelization to the world, meaning we'll come here, we'll, we'll praise God, we'll exalt God. We don't have an issue with that. We come here, we'll hear the word, we'll receive the word, we receive the power behind the word. But he said for some strange reason, when it comes to evangelizing, it's a lost, forgotten component. But thank God it ain't a lost, forgotten component here at the Way World Outreach. Amen. And he said, he said this, he said, yeah, you know, we could do a worship night, people will come together. I do a Bible study at my house, people come together. But he said, man, for some reason, when I ask people to do outreach, he said, it's the same three people that show up every week. And he said, it just breaks my heart because he said, we're, our, our church is growing, it's thriving, the, we're, we're growing in our numbers. But he said, why is it? that nobody wants to share their faith outside the church. And there's a lot of reasons why, I, and I'm going to go over one of those reasons for the sake of time. Um, I believe, and, you know, we had Holy Warriors, Mass Adopt a Black, a couple months ago, and we asked everybody in the crowd. We had about 100, 120 people come out to do Adopt a Black, and um, we said, who in here is afraid to go hit the streets and evangelize. And over 40 people raised their hand. And I believe it was only 40 people being honest because I know it was a lot more than that. And the reason why we're afraid, the, we, the reason why we're a little fearful and uncertain is because we don't know our authority in Christ. 
We don't really understand our authority because if we truly understood our authority, uh, understand, understood our authority, we would walk different. We would talk different. We would teach different. We would preach different. You would even pray different if you knew your authority in Christ. And when you know your authority in Christ, you operate in your authority in Christ. You can't walk in something that you don't even know about. And when you're walking in authority, you're walking in a whole different type of swagger. You got confidence. Your shoulders are swinging. You, you could be like 5'7", but in the spirit, you're like a heavyweight champion. You're like, because, like, you know, I'm not the biggest guy, but I know when I'm in the streets, I, I, I just feel like I'm 37 and 0, and I got 37 KOs. I don't know. Like, I, I just, I'm a different person in the spirit. That's because of the authority that I walk in. So right now, you know, a lot of us, we, 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 this is the thing. We come in here. We're loud. We're hallelujah. We praise God. We're loud in the church, but we're silent in the streets. And you could be real braggadocious, and you could be real boastful about your Jesus, but when you leave here, you're quiet as a church mouse. And you don't got to be the guy with the megaphone because those aren't the best type of methods, Right? But you should be able to live your life in such a way to where they see the Jesus in you. Like, your love should be different. Your peace should be different. How you respond to trials and tribulations, that should be different too. And you, you dealing with hostile people, you should be able to, to handle that too. The problem is, is when you get squeezed, when a little pressure comes upon you, people ain't seeing Jesus. They're seeing, they're seeing the fleshly you. They need to see the power of the Holy Spirit. And you can only walk in your authority when you're being led by the Holy Spirit. And the Holy Spirit isn't confined to a building. You know, the Holy Spirit wants to let loose when you leave the house. The Holy Spirit wants to speak. The Holy Spirit wants to move. The Holy Spirit wants to touch and lay hands and see the sick be delivered, see the demons cast it out. But the Holy Spirit is waiting for a man of God and a woman of God to partner up with. It's the great co-mission. We got to cooperate with Jesus himself. So one of the reasons why, there's a lot of reasons why, a lot of it, we're comfortable, we don't know, but one of the main reasons we don't evangelize is because we don't understand the authority and power that we have in Christ. Now, authority has always played a role in your life from childhood to adulthood. When, as a child, your parents, they told you what to do, and you listened to your parents because they had authority over your life. When you went to school, you had a teacher, and the teacher brought order and instructions to the classroom, and you listened because the teacher had authority over your life. And after you got out of school, some of us got jobs. Some of us got jobs, right? At your job site, you got a supervisor. You got a superior person that's over you, and they give you instructions, they give you responsibilities, they tell you what to do, they give you a weekly schedule, and you listen to them because the authority that they have over you. So you understand, you, you, believe it or not, you, you've, you've actually understood authority in every aspect of your life, but when it comes to you living in Christ, walking in Christ, we sometimes tend to forget. Think about it. Authority, authority. So, what's the, what's the definition of authority? It's the right to rule, to command, to govern. And the Greek word is exousia, which is translated in the English word. It literally means that which arises out of a being. Right? And, like, we, so we've always had authority our whole lives. We listen to our parents. We listen to our teachers. We listen to our supervisors on the job site. Now, we're going to talk about the Great Commission in Matthew 28, 18 through 20. It says, And Jesus came and spoke to them, saying, All authority has been given to me in heaven and on earth. Now, Jesus is asserting his authority. He's basically saying, I'm the shot callers of all shot callers. 
I'm the king of kings. I'm the Lord of lords. I'm the alpha, the omega, the beginning and the end. Whatever I say, you got to do it. So he's, 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 he, hey, mind you, before this, the disciples were in training for three years. And Jesus is about to ascend into heaven. So these were Jesus' final words before he ascended. Last time I checked, final words, last words are a huge deal. Right? So, so he's about to leave. But before he leaves, he got to give him a set of instructions. And he's letting it be known. All authority has been given to me over heaven and on earth. And if we listen to our earthly leaders, who they have authority of our life, how much more should we listen to Jesus, who has all authority over everybody else? Because you'll, li you'll listen to your supervisor, but let's see if you'll, you'll, you'll listen to this. He's saying, all authority has been given unto me. And he's saying, go, therefore. See, see, the first part is a declaration. Jesus is just saying, I'm, I'm the one that, had, that calls all the shots. The second portion of scripture is a command, not a suggestion. This is the great commission, not the great suggestion. So he's saying, he said, <laughs> go, therefore, and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, the Son, of the Holy Spirit, teaching them to observe all things I have commanded you. So all that's a command. This last part, he's saying, and lo, I am with you always. I am with you always. I am with you always, even until the end of age. Now, we use that word, God will never leave me or forsake me. But no, when you're, th this, is, this portion of scripture, you are literally partnering up with the power of of Jesus when you say yes to this type of mission. And this is a special mission. Like you don't underestimate this mission, don't sleep on this mission. Like he is giving you power and authority that no other earthly person could give you. It's special. So my question is for, for, for you guys is, we're gonna go over today is what is the Great Commission? How did the Great Commission impact the first church? And what role does the Great Commission play in your current life? So just ask yourself, what role does the Great Commission play in your current life? So that, let's, let's go to the definition of commission, because we, we, we want to understand that this, the Great Commission. So commission means a formal written warrant granting the power to perform various acts or duties. It means authorization, command to carry out a specific task or assignment. It's the authority to act for, in behalf of, or in place of another. If, in, and it means to be entrusted with power and authority. That's what commission means. Now, police officers, has anybody in here ever got their house raided? Don't raise your hand, come on. Don't, don't come on, come on, we don't need to know that. So, unfortunately, I got my house raided twice. I was there for the first one, and I, and I missed the tail end of the second one. Thank God. So police officers, they have a certain level of power and authority, but in order for them to search a house, in order for them to raid a house, they got to go to one who has greater power and authority. So they have to go to a judge. Now, a judge doesn't just become a judge. A judge gets commissioned into a position by the judicial branch, and the judicial branch grants the judge special power and authority. So cops, they got power and authority, but they don't got power and authority just to go up in anybody's house. They gotta go to one that has more power and authority. So there's levels to power and authority, and the reason why we don't walk in the, it's in the power of authority, because we're not understanding what Jesus is saying in this portion of scripture. We hear it all the time. Go, 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 make disciples. Whoa, whoa wait a second. Before we could go, we got we to gotta understand that we got power and authority. Because if you go out there without power and authority, you're going to get beat up. Ever go to knock on San Bernardino right on a Saturday? You might get beat up. So. Police officers can't search a house without being given access from higher authority. Who is that authority? It happens to be a judge. A judge gets commissioned into office by the judicial branch. Only the judge can authorize or give permission to the police 
to carry out a search warrant or a raid because they have been given, they have been granted the power and authority to do so. Officers alone do not possess this power. They can only get authorized by one who has been commissioned. Once granted this warrant, the officers now understand the power that they possess. They are able to execute the mission at hand. Now, as we, as being men and women of God and sons and daughters of God, do we understand the power that Jesus has commissioned us with? Understanding our authority and walking in it, when we understand our authority, we can now walk in confidence in the Lord. The Lord is reassuring us that we are not alone and that God is always with us. When we have this type of confidence, we can go anywhere, any place, at any time, unannounced, and we could reach and rescue the lost. So the disciples, they knew the power and the authority that they had because it was given by the highest authority. So when Jesus gives the Great Commission, what happens? The book of Acts happens. So what happens in the book of Acts? In, in, in the first chapter, Jesus says, and you shall receive power when the Holy Spirit comes upon you to be my witnesses. And in Acts chapter 2, Peter preaches. 3,000 people get saved, right? And people were getting saved every day. Acts chapter 3, a lame man for over 40 years, he gets healed and he, he tags along with Peter and John. The whole town is in amazement because they knew him as the lame man and they go to Solomon's porch. Peter and John continue to preach Jesus. 5,000 people get saved. Acts chapter 4, Peter and John, they get arrested, but they ain't tripping. They're commanded to not speak the name of Jesus. This is their response. Is it better to listen to God or is it better to listen to you? You be the judge. You see, they weren't tripping because of their power and authority. So, so <laughs> they experienced now, they experienced their first sign of persecution. So what did they do? They all came together and they prayed for boldness, and the whole place shook, and they were all filled with the Holy Spirit, and they spoke with boldness. This is Acts chapter 4. They were filled with the Holy Spirit in Acts chapter 2, so they got filled with the Holy Spirit again. You can get continual fillings by the Holy Spirit. It said they got filled with the Holy Spirit. Now they spoke with boldness. Acts chapter 5. Many miracle signs and wonders took place through the hands of the apostles, and the believers were increasingly being added. Sick people were being brought into beds. The shadow of Peter was healing them. Sick people, demonic people, they were all getting healed. The religious leaders were so jealous that this time they threw them in the prison, right? But at night, an angel of the Lord opened the doors, and the angel didn't say, go home, be quiet, go home, go into hiding. The angel said, go back to the temple and keep preaching Jesus. So word broke out, the word broke out that they were in, the, they were supposed to be in jail, but they were in the temple preaching. So the apostles, they get arrested again. Somebody say again. And now they're brought before the council and the council reminded them, didn't we tell you to stop preaching Jesus? Remember, power and authority, right? They said, you're filling Jerusalem with this doctrine. Peter said, I'd rather obey God than I'd rather obey you power and authority. Now, now at this point, the religious leaders were hell-bent. We're killing these dudes because the movement that they're starting, it's so crazy. It's so unstoppable. The only way we could stop them is we literally got to kill them. But Gamaliel, who happens to be a well-respected Pharisee, a well-respected Pharisee who's not a Christian, he said, he says to the rest of the religious leaders, hey, 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 you guys got to be careful. We've seen movements come. We've seen movements go. And if this movement is from man, it'll eventually stop. But if this movement is from God, there is nothing that we can do. Again, it's power and authority. So Gamaliel says, you got to really think about what we want to do here. I don't think we want to kill him because it could actually mean that we're actually fighting against God. Let's give God some praise. So, so, wait, it gets better. So they ended up beating the apostles. 
commanding them to never speak the name of Jesus again. This is like the third or fourth time that they demanded them to not speak. So the apostles rejoice. They're celebrating that they were worthy to suffer for the name of Jesus. And every day they did not stop teaching and preaching Jesus at the temple and from house to house. This was crazy. So Acts chapter 8, a great persecution arose where Saul started wreaking havoc on all the Christians. His goal was to get rid of every Christian in Jerusalem. So it caused a great scattering. So all the Christians, they just started scattering to the nearby towns. And it didn't stop the message. It only continued to spread the message everywhere they went. So everywhere they went, they kept preaching Jesus. Nothing could stop the disciples because of the power and authority they were, they were operating in. Now, recent study in 2018, it said only 17% of Christians know what the Great Commission is. Only 17% know. Does that mean all 17% are actually doing it? No. Only 2% actually share their faith. So, guys, I want, I want you to understand, like, the government's not going to say you can't be a Christian. But what the government will eventually say is you can't preach the gospel. And the government's going to say you can't preach the gospel I want to know how many people it's really going to offend because only 2% are preaching it anyway. So that means the church is going to go back to ordinary life. But not at the Way World Outreach. We're preaching the gospel. We're teaching the gospel. We're casting out demons. Can't stop. Won't stop. Not on my clock. We're not slowing down. Because... This isn't a movement from man. This is a movement from God. Power and authority. So, the Great Commission is a spiritual warrant from heaven. Think about that. Because when, when cops get the warrant from the judge, you know cops are excited when they get that warrant, right? They're, 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 they're like, oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Because they're supposed to knock and give you like a certain amount of time. They, you get like one knock and the battering ram breaks the door down. So they, they, uh, act, they actually, some abuse their authority, but can the Christians start using their authority? Come on, come on. We're not going to sit back, relax. We're going to start walking in power and authority. We're going to preach the gospel like never before, and we're going to snatch souls out the pits of hell. Now, cops, they understand the warrant. You got the warrant already. Hey, the warrant is in Matthew. It's in Matthew chapter 28, 18 through 20. You got the warrant. It's in your hand, man of God, woman of God. You got the warrant already. Use that warrant. So it's a spiritual warrant from heaven that Jesus has commanded us to fulfill, granting us power and authority to carry out this special mission, to go into the world anywhere, any place, at any time, unannounced, to preach the gospel, make disciples, reach and rescue those who are lost. Now, the Great Commission, it's the literal power of God being manifested into the earth through the men and women of God that accept the mission. It's a mandate from heaven. Jesus is partnering up with you in power through the Holy Spirit. Because some of you are looking at me like, hey, you, 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 could, you can quote the Greek and the Hebrew all day long. You know all the scriptures, but when's the last time you shared the gospel to somebody outside? We met a guy on Arrowhead and 13th. He knows how to speak the Bible in five different languages, and we asked him, you don't ever share the gospel? He said, no, I'll leave that to you. Crazy, right? He knows it in five different languages but won't share the gospel. And this is the thing, like, people think it's, it's only for evangelists. He's like, yeah, you might not be called to be an evangelist, but you're still called to evangelize. And I hear it all the time. I'm walking through the halls, Pastor Margo, hey, 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 you're the, you're the adopt a block guy, huh? And if I had a dollar for every person that told me this, I'd, I could pay the rent at the Pomona store. People, people stop me all the time. They say, hey, you're the adopt a block guy. And I'm like, yeah, 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 whatever. They're like, hey, man. God's been putting it on my heart to come out. And I'm just like, come out. 
Come out. Come out. You know how many people actually come out? 2%. So I want to ask you, are you part of the 2% or are you part of the 98%? Because 98% aren't sharing it anyway. So the Great Commission is not the Great Suggestion. Jesus isn't suggesting. He is commanding. These are marching orders given by the highest authority on earth. Now, I'm going to give you a practical example of, of being in, I've been doing this since 2013, walking, prowling around on the devil, right? So a couple months ago, I'm, I'm on Arrowhead at 13th, the second story. There's a guy sitting on his stoop, rugged man, crazy looking beard, fully tattooed up. He's got, he's got a tank top on. And I already know out the peripheral of my eye, I'm like, man, that's going to be a hard one to crack. So I'm walking up, and I, I just start smiling. I start smiling. I'm like, hmm, 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 hmm. I got to do something different. So I walk by him. I said, hey, sir, how's it going? I'm smiling. Hmm, 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 hmm. And I turn around because it's, it was real, real narrow, and he, he gets up off his stoop. And he said, do you know who I am? And I told him, do you know who I am? I'm a disciple of Jesus Christ. I didn't say that. I didn't say that. I didn't want to get beat up, so I didn't say that. So anyway, so he says, he gets up, do you know who I am? And I said, no, I actually don't. He picks up his shirt. He starts showing me all his tattoos, all his gang affiliations. He's showing me his street kid, and he tells me he's from a, prominent gang. He started in the 1980s, blah, 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 blah. He's just basically me let, let, letting me know, little homie, I'm the triple OG, right? So I, I'm just listening. I ain't saying nothing. I'm just quiet. I'm, I'm moving in power and authority. I'm being led by the spirit. So I'm cool. I'm calm. I'm collected, collective. I, I ain't tripping. So he begins to, you know, tell me who he is. He's, he's asserting his authority. At least he's trying to. And then, I, and, then, and then I say, well, it sounds like you're a weapon for destruction, but don't you think you're supposed to be a weapon for the Lord? And he says, he says right away, that part. See, some of you guys ain't been in the streets. That part means I'm rocking with you, I'm vibing with you, and I kind of agree with you. Say, see, you guys don't know what that part means because you ain't been in the streets. They don't know what it means. So he says, he says that part real quick. So I'm like, I got a small little angle. So he begins to, he begins to, to start. He's, he's still, woo, 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 woo. he's like, I'm 63 years old. I'm still beating people up. He, fla he flashes his gun at me, shows me his little, his little work. So he's still, he's still, he's trying to intimidate me. But I know my power and authority. I ain't tripping. I ain't going nowhere. So I, I begin to tell him, I said, how old are you? His name, he, his, his name was Johnny. I hope he's not watching because um, we're going to have a problem. But anyway, so I said, how old are you? He said, I'm 63 years old. I said, and you're still beating people up? And then I say, don't you think God created you for a greater purpose? And Johnny, he goes, man. Just like that, like whole body, man, he like he buckled in the spirit. And I'm like, okay, whoa, whoa, whoa. So, so he begins, he, he begins, I said, Johnny, like God has a greater purpose for your life and it's not over yet. And he says, man, I know that Bible way more than you. And he said, I've read it way more than you. I know it more than you. He's like, how old are you? I was like, I'm 38. He's like, I didn't read it more than 38 times. And I was just like. Mind you, he's talking, talking. He's saying like thousands of words, but I'm speaking very little. But every little word I say is packed and laced with power. So, so I say, I say, I say, Johnny, what, what, like, what are you, what, what are you, what are we talking about here? He said, Yeah, man, like, like, yeah, I know that Bible. I know it way more than you. I said, Johnny, all you got is head knowledge. You, it's not even in your heart. You still got to walk it out. And he, he, he's quiet again. 
Like every time I had a response, he just he was he was flustered, he was flabbergasted. So we're we're talking, we're talking. I'm like, all right, let me get out of here. This guy, you know. So, so I be, I begin to tell him, you know, I'm all right, Johnny. I gotta go. He says, hey, 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 before you go, you think you can come back and teach me some more? And I'm like. I said, I said, yeah, I'll come back. I'll teach you some more. I said, I'm still a student. I'm still learning. I said, matter of fact, you being my big brother, you could teach me a thing or two, too. And I probably shouldn't have said that because it ushered him into, yeah, I'm going to bring out the Quran, and I can start teaching you, too. And, and see, I was quiet, 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 but this is where I asserted my authority. I said, listen, with all due respect, I only mess with the Holy Spirit. I don't mess with the demonic spirit. I was quiet, 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 and then he looks at me, and he says, all right. And 99.9% .9 of the times when I minister to people, I always pray with them. At that moment, I didn't feel led to pray with them. I left. I left because I wasn't led by the Spirit to pray with them because I believe the Spirit already rocked him out of his socks. So last, 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 last example of, of power and authority. I, I could sit here all day and do this. Um, so we're in, we're, we're in Philadelphia. Me and the guys, we just got done doing an outreach, you know, and, and you know, when we, we, when we want to act up, we go to the craziest places. So we're looking up, what's the craziest place in Philadelphia to go to? And Kensington came up. Kensington, they call it zombie land. So we look it up, everybody's like, ooh, let's go to zombie land, Right? Let's let's go let's go let's go snatch and grab a soul, right? So so we go to Zombie Land. It's 11:30 at night, Pastor. Ain't nobody going to Zombie Land at 11:30 at night. So we're there. It's 12 of us, and everybody's walking around like a zombie. It's everybody's getting loaded on fentanyl, trank, um, bodies are on top of bodies. It, it made Skid Row kind of look like Disneyland. It's the worst thing I've ever seen. So we're 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 in we're in, we're, we're in Zombie Land. We're praying, we're praying, we're praying. And the youngest person in the group, where's he at? John, John, stand up. Stand up. 17 years old. Remember, power and authority. So, so we're praying for people, right? John, John meets a guy named Woods who's high as a kite. And John, John's just preaching his testimony, preaching Christ crucified. Christ resurrected, right? He's preaching the gospel. And, man, Woods gets radically supernaturally touched where he, he gets touched. He takes his pipe. He smashes the pipe on the ground in front of all the zombies. 17 years old. Some of you guys are 35, 45. It's time to walk in your power and authority. So... So he smashes the pipe on the ground. He starts stomping on the pipe. Like, you got to understand this. The drug dealers lost a returning customer, but heaven gained a soul. Power and authority. Everybody stand up. Let's give God, if you receive something tonight, let's give God some praise. If you receive something tonight, you got to, I, I believe there is an impartation of power and authority. Now, we read the Great Commission. Guys, the Great Commission is for every believer in the house of God. And I pray tonight we're going to make a call that you be filled with that power, that authority, and that boldness. Because those are three three reoccurring things in the book of Acts, power, authority, and boldness. And, and you know where you're at in your walk. You know where you're at in your evangelism, if you evangelize or not. And this is just a, this is just, this is just to ask yourself, like, like, like if God has done something in your life, if God has rescued you, shouldn't that come out of you? Like, it should be natural. Like, pastor, in the world, we, we figured out how to mix drinks. You, nobody taught you how to lace a blunt, but you figured that out. It's like we get saved, 
And then evangelism is like, I can't do it. In the world, you figured everything out. But when you get saved, we get a little dumb and naive. Like, we come to church to learn. We come to church to get equipped. We come to church to know our identity so that we know how we can move and operate and we get our gifts. But that's not where church ends. That's where it starts. That's where it starts. And guys, we're living in a lost and dying world. And everything is being pushed on people. The demonic agenda. I went to Five Below a couple months ago and on the table, Pastor, how to be a witch. On the table. How to cast a spell. Third eye. Manifest. All these books on the table. And not one Jesus book on the table. That's the day and age that we're living in. Now, if men and women of God in here, if you don't share Jesus, he's not an option. They're getting every single option, but they're not getting Jesus because the men and women of God, only 2% want to share their faith. But I believe tonight, God is doing something new in this house. He's shaking people up, and he's here to remind you, you got power, baby. You got authority, baby. It's time to walk in that power and authority, and you will never be the same again. Your neighborhood will never be the same again. Your job site will never be the same again. Your family will never be the same again. So the first call, man, you, we need activation of that power and authority, the boldness, the impartation of the Holy Spirit. Come on up if that's you. Come on up. That's the first call. You've been, you, you're, you're afraid to share your faith. You don't know how to share your faith. You don't know where to start. You don't know how to do it. But right now, God is going to give you that power, that authority, that boldness. Hey, I know there's a lot of people. You came in here. You're, you've been afraid to share your faith. The devil will not silence you anymore. The days of you being quiet, that's going to end. The days of you shutting up, that's going to end. Come on. Revolution. This is a disciple-making church. We believe in the Great Commission. We believe in the Great Commission. Amen? We need some, some more people to come up here. Please help everybody else that's here. We don't want to miss this moment. Second call. If you're in this place and you're like, man, Drew, you're crazy, Drew. Everything you said is nuts. I just love Jesus. That's it. I just love Jesus. And Jesus has done so much in my life. I can't hold it. I can't, I can't be quiet anymore. If you know you're not right with God and you know you need to get right with God, John 3, 16. Jesus says, I'm, Jesus says, for God so loved the world that he gave his one and only begotten son that whosoever believeth in him shall not perish but have everlasting life. John 14, 6, Jesus says, I'm the way, the truth, and the life. No man comes to the Father but through me. Ephesians 2, 8, by grace we are saved through faith, not of works, lest any man shall boast, but it is a free gift from God. This is a free gift, and he wants to give it to you. Good, what's the problem with good works? Good works, you can't get your way to heaven to good works because good works don't override your bad works. They don't cover your bad works. The only thing that covers your bad works is the blood that was shed on the cross for your sins so that you could be forgiven, you could be redeemed, and you could be born again. Jesus says this. He said, if anybody desires to follow me, you must first deny yourself. Pick up your cross and follow me. It's easy to live for yourself. It takes no work, but it takes a real man of God and a real woman of God to put down their life, to lay down their life and say, I'm not going to live for myself any longer. I'm going to live for Jesus. If that's you, you want to receive Jesus into your heart on the count of three. Don't let nothing stop you from receiving him right now. One, two, three. Raise your hand if you want to receive the Lord into your life. I see that hand. 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 
I see that hand. I see that hand. I see that hand. If that's you, you raise your hand. I want you to come to, come to the front. And this is a sign of you denying yourself. This is a sign of you picking up your cross. And it's a sign of you choosing to lay your life down and following him. Let's give God some praise. Let's give God some praise as they come up. Give God some praise. This is your family member. This could be your son. This could be your daughter. If it was your daughter, you would be celebrated. You would be crying. And just because it's somebody that you don't know, you better celebrate anyway. We're going to pray. Man, there's a lot of people up here. Let's try to cover them. If you're a leader out here, come up here. Lay hands. We're all going to pray corporately. But this is what we're going to pray for. For God to fill us with that boldness. For God to fill us with that power and authority. For God to fill us with the power of the Holy Spirit. Everybody raise up your hands. We're going to receive right now. Yes, Lord. Move, Lord. Everybody repeat after me. Say, Father God, in the name of Jesus, I ask you, Lord, to come into my life. Cleanse me from the inside out. Make me new. All my bad habits, all my bad ways, I die to them now in the name of Jesus. Holy Spirit, come upon me. Fill me. Fill me with your power, with your authority, with your boldness. Help me, Lord, to speak for you, to witness for you, to testify for you. I will be bold. I will be unashamed to share my story, to share who you are, to share what you've done in my life. Thank you, Jesus, for touching me now. Thank you, Jesus, for saving me now. Father God, I lay down my life, and today I receive the great commission over my life. I receive that assignment. I will carry it out with power and authority. In Jesus' name we pray. We all say amen. Give God some praise. Come on, if you, if you took one of those slingshots tonight, just give God some praise. If you took one of those, can we give Andrew a kind of round of applause if you really received tonight? Drew, you know, man, thank you. If you need prayer, come forward. Church, this Sunday, Pastor Marco's bringing a word, and we're going to get our Kids World musical production, but also... We're having our big Christmas giveaway. If you want to volunteer for our Christmas giveaway, you can sign up on the app. We need volunteers. We need your help. We need your support. There's going to be thousands of souls that are coming through these doors that we're going to get a chance to love. So volunteer, help us out. It's going to be an awesome time. We love you. God bless you. We'll see you Sunday. Remember, if God is for you, there's no one who can come against you. God bless.